I think that a lot of the people who support Russia, especially on the conservative side, um, they need to understand one thing and one thing only. Russia hates them. Russia does not care about the West. Russia does not care about traditionalism. Russia simply hates the West and wants to see its downfall. So we might as well support whoever's fighting against them. Um, I mean, it's, it's really that simple. Um, and I always find it very ironic that people on the right wing or the right side support them because, for instance, Russia fields one of the biggest Islamic armies currently. Um, but you have traditionalist Christians who say Ru Russia's upholding Christian values. You know, and I encourage them to do more research. It's like I heard that oh, Ukraine shut down the Orthodox Christian Church, and that was completely untrue. I've got Orthodox Christian friends in Ukraine who still go to church, still worship. They shut down a group of churches that were providing information and assistance to Russia. Um, but people were very misguided. You know, We know that uh, Ukraine's government in the past has been very crooked. It's the reason they saw their revolution in 2014. It's the reason they've had a change in leaders. Um, we've seen the corruption get weeded out by President Zelensky. I don't like his politics, but I like him as an individual. We've seen him weed out the corruption by firing people, imprisoning them for actual corruption or misuse of funds. Um, and other pe people have to understand, too, that the $100 billion we sent to Ukraine, we're not sending them pallets of cash. We're sending them equipment we've paid for over the course of 40 years. It boils down with new taxpayer, old taxpayer, dead taxpayer, young taxpayer, rich taxpayer, and poor taxpayer. It's like less than $10 a person over the past 50 years, 40, 50 years, that has been spent, you know, when it when it's broken down to the amount of taxes paid per individual um, and what it's been used for. So the funds were already misappropriated. There's no reason in being upset that we sent, you know, $100 billion to Ukraine. Let them continue killing Russians. It'll help us in the end. One of the biggest things coming back was everybody politicized my return. Like, everybody wants to say, oh, you shouldn't have fought, or you should, or blah, 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 or this. Or Joe Biden supports it, so I can't, you know. And it's one of the hardest things because you're not coming home to, like our Afghanistan and Iraq war veterans, they came home to open arms and people saying, we love you, you were defending the U.S. And for my side of things, it's like, you know, everyone's so divided on it. It's just I, I like, I dug, yeah. meeting, like in the, the, the Ness region, you know, meeting the older people who lived under Soviet control uh, up until 1994, um, and their hatred for Russia, and how bad Russia had hurt them and kept them oppressed, and seeing that, and seeing the young people, like in Kiev, I see a lot of like your right-wing conservatives. They'll post these videos of young people partying in Kiev and say, "Oh, see, there's not a war going on." They don't understand that a lot of us fought, bled, and died so they'd have that right to party and I'm glad they get that chance and seeing those young people uh, hopefully get a chance to pursue their lives and their dreams and pulling those older people out of those villages or giving them food and stuff uh, I think is <clears throat> I think is what mostly kept me going every day was just uh, trying to preserve the innocent <laughs>